This is Witchbase News for Wednesday the 1st of May 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In a special Elite Dangerous News this week we get to test out the much anticipated ship variant the Python Mark II, we've new information on the future of Super Cruise overcharge in the game and we look at some of the new pre-built ships that are coming to the ARK store. You know how this bit goes please like, subscribe and ding that little bell so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to directly help our work here at the Burr Pit you can also support us through Patreon. Links to that and everything else are in the description below. One of the biggest changes that Elite Dangerous has ever seen in its 10 plus year history, that of pre-built ships available to buy for ARKs is set to launch into the game on the 7th of May. We covered the details of the first two of what Frontier are calling the jump start ships last week. If you missed that here's the skinny on those two ships. The first is a mining focused type 6 that as well as coming bundled with a ship kit with no less than 12 pieces and a salvage white paint job is also largely A rated and has two mining lasers pre-engineered for long range and incendiary rounds. The second is again a largely A rated ship but this time a chieftain outfitted for AX combat and titan diving specifically with two 3C gimbaled enhanced AX multi cannons, a guardian nanite torpedo pylon and two small guardian gauss cannons with anti guardian resistance. This ship package comes with a stygian green paint job and a 12 piece ship kit. Neither ship is going to win any awards in their class but they're not designed to. They are however designed to give the owner a starting point and a taste of what they may be further interested in. This week Frontier have supplied details on the next of the jumpstart vessels, a diamondback explorer. The clue really is in the name with this new breed of ARKs options and like its sister jump starters the exploration jump start comes with a specialised build specific to its stated purpose. Where it counts and where it makes sense the exploration jump start is largely A or D rated. Whilst there are no engineered modules with the ship it does however come pre installed with a class 4 guardian frameshift drive booster. Fairly extensive material gathering and no small amount of hoop jumping would normally be required just to unlock the Guardian booster but it's important to understand that the jump start purchase doesn't wipe away that unlocking requirement. If you want more Guardian FSD boosters you still need to go through that process and the booster in the jump start diamondback can only be used in that same jump start diamondback. The same being true for all the other jump starter options we've seen so far. They have minimal engineering or unlocked specialised modules and those items and unlocked modules can only be used in that specific ship. Perhaps ironically the jump start diamondback would be the perfect ship to get you down to the guardian sites away from human occupied space to work on the unlocking process. Each of the three jump starts we've seen thus far comes in at 25,500 arcs which equates to £13 if purchased off the store. It's clear with the ships that we've seen so far that these jump start vessels are not necessarily aimed at the seasoned player but without wishing to labour the point they are designed to give the new player a boost in the early stages of their elite dangerous journey and ensure that the game itself doesn't get in the way of them accessing some content that they might be keen to try out. Far from being the much feared pay to win the jump starters aren't really even pay to skip. As I've mentioned if you want to unlock the modules or engineering that they provide you still need to do it. What they are however is pay to get a leg up or a small boost maybe and I don't personally find anything awfully threatening or game breaking in that. The really big headliner early access item that members of the Frontier content creation program got this week was the first of at least four new promised ship variants that Elite Dangerous is getting this year, the new Python Mark II. 
The ship being the first new ship that Elite Dangerous has seen in five and a half years since the Mamba was released in December 2018. The arrival of the Python Mark II at this specific point in Elite's life is no coincidence. For reasons that will become apparent what we've seen of the ship so far make it fairly clear that it's squarely aimed at combat and perhaps more specifically even at PvP combat. That's not to say that the Mark II can't do other things as well and the ever inventive Elite Dangerous community will undoubtedly find some different uses for it. But none of them will be, I suspect, where the ship is designed to truly excel. The specs of the ship then are as follows. 4 large and 2 medium hardpoints, class 6 power plant and thrusters, class 5 FSD and a class 6 power distributor. It comes with no less than 6 utility slots compared to the regular Python's 4. So far so more. But it's in the optional slots that we see where the Mark II is lacking the flexibility of its older sibling. The Mark II comes with just a 6, a 4, a 3 and a 2 optional slots and then 3 class 1 slots and that's it. Where the Python Mark I is a very capable Swiss army knife the Mark II is an extremely sharp but quite specific rapier of a ship. It's fantastic at what it's designed for but if you try and open a can of beans with it you'll slice your own leg off. I'm not a PvP guy so I wouldn't dream of attempting a full PvP perspective on the ship. I do however know a PvP guy and in his considered opinion the Mark II features great weapon convergence. The number of utility slots should mean it's a great shield tank. The base ship without any engineering provides excellent manoeuvrability and boost speed which will give the ship a nice competitive edge in flight. Drawbacks as I've mentioned it's lacking in multi role potential given its small internal acreage and this lack of optional slots will severely limit the availability of shield cell banks and hull reinforcement with the obvious impact being survivability in any extended fight. He did finish by saying something like ...if this thing looks at you you're probably dead. Genuine heartfelt thanks to my PvP guy for the insights. When the Python Mark II was first announced Frontier alluded to it in very vague terms as handling somewhat uniquely and also said that it had a unique ability but that it would make sense when we got our hands on it. Having played with the Mark II I'm very pleased to be able to confirm exactly what Frontier were alluding to when they made those announcements. Both the pre-built Arc Store version of the Mark II and the off the shelf version of the ship that we've seen come pre-fitted with a supercruise overcharge capable version of the frameshift drive. When you enter supercruise overcharge it immediately becomes apparent what the ships special ability is and what its intended use case is. Whilst the SCO FSD in the Python Mark II still chews through fuel at a rate of knots the wrist breaking vomit inducing instability of the Thargoid human hybrid drive is almost all but gone. The Python Mark II when compared to any other standard currently available Starship is built to natively use overcharged supercruise. Once in overcharge the supercruise engine doesn't generate anywhere near the heat of its non Mark II brothers and sisters and also demonstrates a fair degree more precision and certainty in its arrival point when SCO is disengaged, largely arriving where you aimed it. When coupled with its apparent ability to go toe to toe with the PvP meta builds such as the FDL it rapidly becomes apparent that the Python Mark II is in all likelihood an extremely capable blockade runner. If the combat capability of the ship is on a par with what FDEV have alluded to then even if you can catch it when it enters a system you had better be fielding some serious firepower. I'd imagine those of you who have tried the SCO drives will now be voicing concerns over things like jump range and engineering. Allow me to allay those fears for you. We've been advised by Frontier that next week all SCO drives will be engineerable and there will be a full gamut of C grade SCO drive sizes available from 2 through to 7. The Python Mark II is being released into the game for regular credits on the 7th of August but from the 7th of May you can drop 16,250 arcs so about £10 to gain access to the ship. 
in the game for 3 months prior to its regular release. There is also a pre-built option for the Python Mark II coming to the ARC store called the Python Mark II Stella which as well as unlocking the Python early also includes an A rated combat build, a venom claret paint job and a 6 piece strike ship kit and the whole bundle comes in at 33,000 ARCs which is somewhere around £15 or so. Overall I've been very impressed by the Python Mark II in just its A rated unengineered state. It's not the ship I would personally gravitate towards but I can see me replacing my current high grade emission farming SCO capable Mark I Python with one of these at the very least. As per its apparent intended use case I do think it likely the PvP community will have a lot to say about the new ship and it's about time they got something new in the game let's be honest and I sincerely hope it opens more metas and more gameplay options for them specifically. The arrival of Powerplay 2.0 later this year is undoubtedly going to be spicier with a gaggle of Mark IIs in it and with what we now know about the Python it'll be interesting to see what the next new ship variant the Type 8 brings to the same party. Will you be getting yourself early access to the Python Mark II next week? What would you like to see from the Type 8 and what other ship variants are you hoping for this year? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.